up. Well, I guess this concept really came full circle now, didn't it? Shame I never got more mileage out of it. Anyway, please bear with me while I reference the clip again. Wow, it's almost like this quote permeates the entire series, and this entire month of videos like some kind of thing. At the conclusion of the 2011 anime, Hunter x Hunter resolved the plot thread that had defined its narrative from the very beginning. Gon found his father. As if that wasn't significant enough, he parted ways with Kilua, the boy who had stood beside him for the majority of that time. His journey was essentially over, and for a subsection of the fanbase, their journey was too. Yet the story continues. The current arc puts Karapika in the spotlight, and although this isn't his first time carrying the plot, it is the first time he has done so completely disconnected from Gon. For those who considered Gon's adventure to be the essence of Hunter x Hunter, this course of events feels underwhelming. Karapika's tale is both structurally and thematically at odds with Gon's, so it's understandable why someone might not find the same value in one as they do the other. Gon's abilities are honed gradually, and careful consideration is given to the environments that shape his progress. His battles tend to be less grand in scale, but this allows him to more naturally adjust to his skill set. There are no shortcuts, everything is earned. Karapika's strengths, however, are born from the restrictions he places on himself. He gets to fight high-level Nen users with fancy techniques of his own despite his inexperience, but it drains him. He seeks only efficiency, unable to find value on the path to his goal and as a result, his efforts come up short. One character achieves within his limits, the other limits what he can achieve. If Gon represents Hunter x Hunter's defining thesis, Karapika embodies its antithesis, and while this might divide opinions on varying sections of the series, the contrast adds weight to its overall message. Gon's darkness resonates stronger through its parallels to Karapika, and the latter's light shines brighter due to influence from the former. To that end, the manga continuing past Gon's meeting with Jing just further reinforces its core ideology, because if the good ending exists in the detours, what does that leave for the true ending? Desire is a key component of Hunter x Hunter, as it is for many other action-adventure titles. Without something to experience, there'd be no reason to explore. Without something to fight for, characters would stagnate. And in a setting where escalation is the name of the game, those who stagnate get left behind. Even Kilua, someone who lacked a concrete end goal, had a friend he could aspire to, defend, and enjoy the journey with. Friendship. A humble desire is the driving force that pushes him to become stronger. Friendship doesn't require a grand resolution, it acts as a building block to other opportunities. And at the same time, it offers a broader contentment than those opportunities ever could. Every adventure will have its lulls, every battle a before and after. But those empty moments can be filled by the presence of others. This applies to Gon as much as it does Kilua, because even though he wanted to find his father, he didn't prioritize that ambition over the safety of his friends. He possesses a purpose without letting it possess him, a statement that holds less true for his scarlet-eyed counterpart. The double-edged nature of Karapika's desire is a focal point of the York New City arc. His clash with Uvogin leaves him disgusted by the blood on his hands, a small, bitter taste of that greater ambition. Not a useless kill by any means, but far from a valiant one either. Karapika sought to annihilate the Phantom Troop, and he wanted to do so independently, but after the chaotic events on the night of September 3rd, that want was abruptly ripped away. This left him broken, confused, aimless, but a meeting with friends brought him joy. If given the chance, they could have carried him through that emptiness, but unfortunately, this brief time in the light would not last. The corpses were fakes. Now confronted by conflicting interests, Karapika accepted outside help with the hope of keeping said helpers safe. In the heat of battle, however, his tunnel vision regarding the troop put Gon and Kilua in harm's way. He overindulged in his desire, and that forced him to compromise on it. To save his friends, he had to let Krollo escape. As for the troop, they sought to settle the score after Uvo's death. But in the background, the survival of the spider was vital. Despite their business with the auction having concluded, they remained in Yorknu to find the chain user, a decision that cost them another member. The only thing that stopped them from losing anyone else was Pakunoda's willingness to compromise on the troop's vendetta, and because she did so, her comrades survived. Just like Karapika, their success was undercut. Even Hisoka, who double-crossed both sides to fight Krollo, loses his payoff. 
The only ones that come out unscathed are Gon and Kilua, who set aside their pursuit of Greed Island to aid Kurapika. Where everyone else receives some form of narrative punishment, Gon and Kilua are rewarded. Not only do they manage to protect Kurapika's mental and physical well-being, but their ability to play the game isn't hindered at all. Because they didn't fixate on their primary goal, they were the only ones who sacrificed nothing. Yet when Gon is on the brink of death during the election, Kurapika isn't around to return the favor. Where Gon's influence had changed Kurapika for the better, shown through his willingness to work with others even after the York New debacle, the latter had affected Gon's mind for the worse. Gon learned about the restraint and vow system from Kurapika, and in walking that path despite multiple warnings against it, he nearly died, an outcome which further reinforces the destructive nature of such a mindset. <laughs> Ruled by vengeance, the young boy resolved to throw his future away, channeling all the strength he could ever attain for a brief, unsustainable tantrum. Nen restrictions allow characters to boost their power by limiting their options, but the narrow focus enables only a fleeting power. These conditions undermine the core appeal of what is supposed to be a flexible, personal system. Because Nen allows hunters the freedom to explore and express their individuality, it also allows them to willingly undercut that freedom. The basics that lead to power can be skipped to make the training faster, but in turn, the utility and success of that ability will also be diminished. Gon may have gotten revenge, but it didn't bring him happiness. It just tacked on a physical price to the guilt he was already burdened with. Gon could only be rescued from his despair by the strong support network he had created along the way, but without such a safety net in place, he wouldn't have survived. Though Karapika hasn't yet taken such a drastic action, this is the end result of his line of thinking, and if he returns to his bad habit of cutting off his allies, there will be no one to save him. People are always striving for more, replacing the goals they achieve with new ones, and it is because these motivations can be so fickle and disposable that they should not be revered above all else. The various story arcs in Hunter x Hunter reflect this with conclusions that could, in many ways, be considered anticlimactic. The exam introduces a tournament bracket, only to jump ahead after a single match and explain the rest through flashback. The Zoldic family seems to be a typical rescue mission, until the supposed captors just let Kilua leave. Heaven's Arena is ripe with initially unexplored concepts. Floor Masters, Battle Olympia, but after Gon's duel with Hisoka, the boys move on. Kurapika's dramatic death game against the Phantom Troop leads to a stalemate, both sides living to fight another day. Chimera Ant sees the main antagonist slowly poisoned to death, with the catharsis of Gon's revenge against Pito undercut through the inversion of the two's moral dynamics. Greed Island might appear to contradict this with its more traditional setup and payoff, but as a game designed by Jing, it naturally enforces his ideology the most. Genther may have metagamed his way to the top by monopolizing key cards and killing players, but Gon's group actually explored the world as it was constructed, thus gaining the knowledge to accurately answer the final quiz. Desire may have propelled Genther forward, but only so far. When faced with an adversary less gripped by greed, someone who possessed ambition yet still took the time to admire their surroundings, he failed. Greed Island's conclusiveness works because its entire premise is a detour. It is primarily a training arc with only a tangential connection between the protagonists and the main villain. For how directly connected to Jing the game is, one might think it would give Gon a clue to his father's location, but it doesn't. It transports Gon to Kite for yet another detour, and when Gon does eventually find Jing, it's by coincidence. The fated meeting, hundreds of chapters in the making, just sort of happens. It's not even Gon's biggest concern at that moment, he's more overwhelmed by the situation with Kite, and so the true catharsis of the encounter winds up disconnected from its first impression. Once again, the anticlimax fuels the notion that the destination isn't the biggest reward. Jing's motivation is to grasp what's not in front of him, which means that his target is forever moving, forever changing. As a hunter, he exists to hunt. Even if a point of satisfaction is reached, life goes on. The weight of that journey will fade as its conclusion falls further into the past, 
and so the cycle must begin anew. A desire for evolution breeds personal growth, yet it likewise means people will never be wholly satisfied with what they have. The solution isn't to have zero goals at all, but to look beyond that narrow scope. The setting doesn't revolve around any one person. There's an entire world of possibilities to explore, so no one should act as if their own perspective and aims transcend all. Dwelling on the past might lead to stagnation, but focusing only on the future robs the present of its meaning. Living in the moment, making the most of the detours, overcoming the obstacles along the way, that's what truly gives the adventure value. Because the top of the mountain isn't the end, it's a brand new beginning. So for now, just enjoy the view.